There's a lot of reasons. What you say is very true. God is with me everywhere. There are, however, different types of energetic vortexes, okay? I imagine most of you have children. Raise your hand if your children have ever lived in a hostel or a dormitory at any point in their education. Raise your hand. I just want to see how many of you have had children in hostels and dorms. Okay, most of you. Most of you, exactly. Sometimes, some sort of hostel, some sort of dorm. Now, what you know as parents of children living in hostels or dorms is they can study anywhere. But if you had your choice of where your child studies, if your child says to you, I've got a big math exam tomorrow, what are you going to say to them? Go to the library. Right? Why are you talking to me? Why aren't you in the library? Go and study. And if they say, oh, I can study in my dorm room, and you can hear ki unke piche sari music chal rahe, sabi baat kar rahe, dawaja khol ke band ho rahe, log aa rahe, ja rahe, you'd say, ek kaam karo beta, abhi, abhi uth ke, library mein ja. Right? Because we understand the material is the same. Their brain is the same. They can study anywhere. And yet, you know as their parent that they're much more likely to absorb the information if they sit in a library than if they sit in their dorm room or their hostel room. Why? It's just the energy. It's not that a dorm isn't an auspicious place. It's just that we know that the energy is not really very conducive to study. In the same way, in our holy places, the energy is much more conducive to connecting to the divine. Now, in our Hindu mandirs, when the deities are brought in, there's actually very, very sacred puja that's done, the Pran Patishta ceremony in which that prawn of the divine is actually brought into the deity. So yes, God is everywhere. And there's been a very, very sacred, powerful ritual through which that power of the divine is not enhanced, because we can't enhance God's power, but it's manifested in a way that is much more easy for us to access it. God is there on a subway, a packed subway, in Delhi or New York. But when you go down here and you sit on the banks of Ganga and you close your eyes and you meditate, it's much more easy to access. There's just, there's, there's places that are more conducive to access that. But we also go to Mandir because when we go to Mandir, we remember God. God is with us all the time. But do we actually remember that? Kya hum din mein kabhi ruke bhagwan ko danyava deyte hain? Kya din mein ruke bhagwan ko I love you kehte hain ki nahi? We forget. Jo har sume hai saath mein wo bhi we take it for granted, we forget. So the mandir, it's, it's not for God. It's to remind us when we go to the mandir, we leave our shoes and we tend to kind of leave our other life. Right? You're not going to sit down in puja and do a business deal with somebody. And if you tried, somebody say, Hare, why did a mandir me? So we understand this is a time to be with God. We also do it for our children because we may know God is with me all the time. But if our children don't actually see us being with God, connecting with God, praying to God, meditating on God, how are we going to give them those sanskaras? So it's also a way of bringing our children into those sanskaras, into that connection. 
And yeah, God is with you all the time too. Yes.